Good morning from <coughs> New York City. It's only 5.30 a.m. And uh, so, I'm going to talk about a very important integral in physics, right? First of all, here's a little quote by one of my favorites, one of the cleverest physicists ever. He's actually the main person in nonlinear dynamics chaos theory at the moment, <clears throat> but he started off doing ordinary theoretical physics. And he said, it has probably not escaped your notice that the only integral that an average physicist can do is the Gaussian integral. Well, that's not entirely true, but there's an element of truth in that. It's for humor. Praedrite is full of humor. Okay, so the Gaussian integral is your average physicist's integral, but it's an integral that every physicist has to be able to do. There are many things that crop up in the form of a Gaussian, a Gaussian distribution. Now, it doesn't have to be in, it, it, have to, it comes up in statistical mechanics, yes, optics, many other things, but it's also part of the quantum field theory in a huge way, in the form of the path integral. To get to a perturbation theory from the path integral, you have to be able to evaluate a Gaussian integral using a, a differential operator. Now this is a bit more general. If we have time, we'll look at this. The Gaussian integral is the form of the integral of minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus alpha, alpha is a constant, x squared dx. Okay, so you're integrating over all space. for a shape that looks like that. And it's actually finite. The answer for that particular one is the square root of pi over alpha. And you say, what use is that? That's a beginning, because then you can start applying Feynman's tricks of differentiating under the int integral sign to get more other integrals related to this. Other integrals, many other ones, can be derived from that first basic result by differentiating under the integral sign. If I have time, I'll do some of those as well. But in this class, I just want to do two main things. First of all, derive this result, yeah? And then derive a more general result, where this becomes an object like that. We achieve that by completing the square. So that'll be part two, and that'll probably do it for this particular class. Now, I'm going to do it in the way that I, I did my last talk. Usually I derive things live, but then you always see my back to the board and I'm doing it. I've done enough live performances now. I mean, I've done 130. So you can see that I'm able to do that. I don't have to show off. But for the YouTube tube, sometimes it's good for me just to write it out, erase it, write it again, then talk about the next set, do the same thing. Because I learned how to splice my videos. For the first 130 videos that I did, I did not know how to splice them, and I would have to go for half an hour non-stop. Sometimes I would make a mistake, and then I'd have to wait till the next video to correct it. Not always, but sometimes. So, let's talk about this. Well, here's the form of the Gaussian integral. I just said so, what it was a minute ago. This is Praedrite Satanovich's quote. Around 1980, when I was a student, I got a letter from him, by the way. So he was decent enough to respond to me. Actually, I got a letter from Feynman and Abdus Salam, and they were both, they were prized possessions of mine. They were both destroyed in a fire in our little cottage in Ireland where I grew up. So if we have time, we'll do Feynman's method. If we have time, we'll do this one. And if we don't do it in this talk, I'll do it in another one. Now, let me erase the board for continuing with this. Erasing the board. Okay, so uh, now that I've erased the board, I rewrote the derivation, the first one that we're going to do, where I said in this exponential of a quadratic, I said beta equals gamma equals zero. So I'm just looking at e to the minus alpha x squared, the basic Gaussian. Okay, so what we do is to approach this interval, we want to make it into, we, well, we go into polar space, polar coordinate space. We square it first. I squared becomes the integral of minus infinity to infinity e to the power of minus alpha x squared dx squared. Dead simple, okay? For clarity, I've split it up one times the other. 
They're both the same thing. It's I squared. Keep in mind, it's always I squared. Now, that's a dummy index. I can make this an X, Y, Z, P, a Q, or anything. So I'm making it into a Y. So X squared stays on this side, and Y squared stays on this side, because we swapped the dummy variable. It doesn't matter what you label that variable as. Now, wait a minute. If I take out a common factor of alpha from both of these things and combine them, I get the x dy e to the power of minus alpha x squared plus y squared. Well, hang on. We know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared in the polar coordinate plane. Now, in this plane, we don't go from minus infinity to infinity that way. We start in the middle and go all the way out. So r becomes from 0 to infinity in the r variable. So, first of all, let's realize that dx dy is the element of area. In polar coordinates, that's r dr d theta. r dr d theta. Two dimensions. So this is now our integral i squared in the polar plane. e to the power of minus alpha r squared r dr d theta. Okay, so we come down here, and the limits are from zero to infinity because we've gotten rid of that singularity in the xy plane. Now what we're going to do is this. We let u equal alpha r squared. So alpha r squared becomes u with a negative sign. And what about dr? Actually, r dr du is 2r dr, and there's an alpha in front of it, okay? So therefore then, r dr is du over 2 alpha, see? du over 2 alpha. So we plug, plug that into our integral. We have the 2 pi, the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus u du over 2 alpha. That's our basic integral. Now, 2 alpha... 2 pi over 2 alpha is just pi over alpha. And the integral of minus u, e to the minus u, is just e to the minus u over minus 1. And we go from the extent of 0 to infinity, the limits of 0 to infinity. So now we've gathered it all up together. We'll keep it, everything written down. 2 pi over 2 alpha from 0, 0 to infinity. And I put that the right way around. Yeah, from 0 to infinity. e to the power of minus alpha uh, is 0. And negative times negative 1 is positive 1. When we set anything to the power of 0 is 1. And we get root pi, sorry, we get pi over alpha. Pi over alpha, don't forget, is not i. It's i squared. Pi over alpha is pi over alpha. And it's i squared. Take the square root of i squared and we get i, and we get root pi over alpha. So here's our result. Okay, I'll just erase this. Keep that in your heads, it's the fundamental basic Gaussian integral that you need to hang on to. It crops up in all sorts of different ways. We're ignoring these things here. It looks a bit messy, but I will clean the board again before we continue. So, in order to continue, I've got to clean the board properly. It's a lot of work to do that. I'll stop the moving for a minute. Now, let's look at uh, how to get more general results. We want to get the integral of x squared e to the power of minus alpha x squared. We want to pull down an x squared, and to do that, we just take a derivative of this guy with respect to alpha. So let's look at that. Okay, so we go d by the alpha i. This is our i. All the time, it's the basic i. d by the alpha e to the power of minus alpha x squared dx is going to be d by the alpha, what that is itself. This thing is root pi over alpha, okay? So let's move this. Now we bring this under the integral sign. It comes through the sign. 
operating on e to the power minus alpha x squared, and it's dx. Well, on the left-hand side, we have d by d alpha i. And on the right-hand side, we know what i is. It's root pi over alpha. We'll go, we go d by d alpha i. All we're saying is d by the alpha i on the left-hand side is d by the alpha i on the right-hand side. Okay? So when we take that derivative, we bring down, remember we're differentiating with respect to alpha, not x. d by the alpha of this guy brings down a negative x squared. So we replace the d by the alpha with that. Now, d by the alpha root pi, well, root pi is just a constant, but taking the derivative with respect to alpha to the power of a half, we get minus a half, alpha to the power of a half minus one, the derivative of root pi, sorry, one over root alpha. So I gathered up those terms. The constant root, root pi is divided now by a two with a minus sign. A half minus one is three over two. So the answer for that one is, there's a negative sign here, and a negative sign there, negative on one side, negative on the other side, but a change of both to a positive. Now we have the result that x squared, e to the power of minus alpha x squared dx, is half root pi over alpha cubed. Can we stop there? We can differentiate as many times as we want. We can go d, by, d squared by the alpha squared and we get an x to the fourth over here, right? Plus another term, of course. <clears throat> we can go d by the alpha cubed. You can try those exercises at home. In fact, we can go dn by the alpha to the n i for any particular case you want, and you can play around with them, and you can get all sorts of interesting results that way. Let's wrap this one up now and go to the a little more general case where beta and gamma are non-zero, but I will change alpha, beta, and gamma to a, b, and c. Okay, uh, we'll finish up with this part. That's enough for this particular class. Other things, such as the more, such as the, the differential operator, I'll leave for a separate one. This is enough to get us started. I'm going to look at the a more general case where b and c are non-zero. I had alpha, beta, and gamma the first time. I'm just using a, b's, and c's. That's okay. So now we have to evaluate this thing. It's still a quadratic. It's still a Gaussian. E to the power of minus ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, general formula for a quadratic. I'll take out a common factor of a. So x squared over a, that's this one. You have to divide this by a, that's this one, that's still bx, that times that. And c over a, over there, dx. So we actually complete the square. So I do it this way. x squared plus b over a, x plus c over a is going to be something that I kind of guess at because you go half the coefficient of x squared. Like, like, don't worry why, why that's the case. I'm looking at this. So I take x plus b over 2a and square it. If I square it, I get this thing. Plus I also get the b over ax term, which is here. That's what we're going to need, okay? And the c over a out here and the k. So I'll square that term, but I still have this one. And there's something else in here. I don't quite know what it is yet, but we'll figure out what it is. Okay, this k, we'll find out what it is. When I square this whole thing here, I get x squared plus b, b, over four, b squared over 4a squared plus bx over a. So I, this, it's this much too big. And I still have the c over a. So I have to make it back to this expression, okay? which is what we've got up here. To make it back that expression, the k has to cancel this one here, okay? So k, to cancel this one here, has to be negative b squared over 4a squared. And then these two guys cancel, and I get the original expression. If I set k equal to negative b squared over 4a squared, all right? So I put that all in now. However, before I put it all in, I'm not going to use x plus b over 2a again in this expression here, in this one, or in this one. I'll take it. x squared is going to be x plus b over 2a all to be squared. It's a new variable. Now, I made a mistake here. d little x is the same as d big x because these are constants. 
So now we're integrating from minus infinity to infinity over the big dx, where the big x squared is x plus b over a to b squared. Okay? Now these are constants, so I can take them all out of the integral sign. So taking them out, we go e to the power of minus a times c over a minus b squared over 4a squared outside, and I'm left with the Gaussian that we had before. Well, I know that the integral for this, for any variable, doesn't matter what the hell you, you label it, is root pi over a. Root pi over alpha, if it was an alpha, it's not an alpha. So now the whole integral is the constant, e to the power of minus c over a, which I've multiplied through by the a here and here. C over a times a is just c. B squared over 4a squared times a is just b squared over 4a. There it is there, with a positive sign. Negative times negative is positive, and a negative sign up here. Times the integral from minus infinity. d big x. This is the Gaussian. This is the constant, and this is the result. So let's write the result down now. I'll let you get your hands or heads around that. Not an alpha, I'm sorry. That's an A. Pi over A. And that's the answer. That's a, let me write it more clearly. So that's the answer. And that's what we were looking for. So now what did I do? I did the first case where I had B and C zero just a basic Gaussian. Then I looked at differ differentiating under the in integral sign to get integrals with an x squared as a prefix. And then I said you can generalize that. I didn't do those calculations. You can try those at home. And then I let this big X equal to that, evaluated by completing the square to arrive at this result. And that's very neat and very fundamental. Crops up a lot in physics, okay? Many aspects of it.